Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing cellular damage. Now, if you guys haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us and we really appreciate it. So with that being said, let's discuss cellular injury really quickly. Our cells can get injured when the level of stress that a cell is under exceeds the ability of our cell to adapt to that stress. Essentially, when you have too much stress, our cells are not able to adapt and hence you are going to see cellular injury occurring. Now, there are many different ranges of injury that can happen and the extent of the injury is going to depend on three things number one it's going to depend on the type of the cell itself it's going to depend on the type of stress and then it's going to depend on the severity of the stress that's very important because that's going to dictate how severe or how extreme the injury is going to be we do have certain cells in our body that are more uh, susceptible to stress, like our neurons, and we have certain cells that are more resilient to stress, like our muscle cells, okay? So susceptible, like neurons, and more resilient, like muscle cells. And cellular injury can happen due to hypoxia, inflammation, malnourishment, genetic mutation, and trauma. And real quick recap, we've discussed cellular injury, and we have discussed hypoxia in previous lectures, so you can go check them out. But hypoxia is very important to remember as well in the vignette of cellular damage because you have to understand what is causing cellular damage. A lot of things can cause cellular damage. One of those things is definitely hypoxia. Hypoxia is essentially a condition where you have low oxygen being supplied to a body or a part of the body. But this is all happening at the tissue level. So this is happening at the tissue level. Okay, very, very specific. So when you have low oxygen that's being delivered to the tissues, certain things will happen. Number one, you have to remember that our tissues at certain point are all dependent on oxygen. Whether they are more resilient or they are less resilient, they are still dependent on oxygen and that's for all tissues across the board. Now when you remove oxygen at certain point, you're going to cause damage and the way it happens is if you think about oxygen itself, what is the role of oxygen in biochemistry? Oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. Remember uh, in biochemistry when we were talking about oxidative phosphorylation and the production of ATP well oxygen is the final electron acceptor so therefore when you have a lack of oxygen you are going to mess up or impair oxidative phosphorylation and thus you'll see a low ATP or energy level and that is how hypoxia causes damage in the cell you have low ATP Okay, very, very important. This is just basic biochemistry. And I know a lot of people forget this because, you know, you're like, oh, I'm just going to take it out of my mind. But you need to remember this. Very, very important. So low ATP is essentially the mechanism of damage that's happening in hypoxia. So now let's talk about cellular damage. Cellular damage can happen through many different mechanisms, but essentially it all relates back to ATP, right? If you have low ATP, your cell is not going to be able to function properly, and that is essentially going to cause the cell to damage itself through many different mechanisms. But the three that we're going to talk about are very, very important. Number one, when you have a lack of ATP, you are going to end up blocking the sodium potassium pumps. That is very important. This means you are not going to be able to remove sodium from the from the cell and let's just dry that draw that out so you can see so let's say this is your cell you have sodium right here inside of the cell and it cannot go out because you block the pump well, what's going to happen? Remember, water follows sodium. That's a mechanism. That's a rule. You should just commit to your mind. So if you have water in the interstitial space between the cells, that water is then going to see the sodium and it's just going to come in. And eventually, that cell is going to start to swell and it will eventually burst and it will just break off. That is what is happening in cellular uh in uh, a, a lack of ATP that's going to cause cellular damage, right? When you block the sodium potassium pumps that are ATP dependent, you are going to see the cell swell and then burst because you have an increase in sodium within the cell. That is the very first mechanism that ATP or a lack of ATP uh, is using to damage the cell. Okay. The second cellular damage mechanism when it comes to a lack of ATP is similar to the first one where you're, you know, blocking sodium. But instead of sodium pumps, you are now going to talk about blocking calcium pumps. So let's draw the cell. All right. So in our cell, you do not want to have high calcium in the cytoplasm. 
very, very important, right? Either it's going to go in the sarcoplasmic reticulum or it's going to go outside of the cell. That's, those are the two things, but it does not want to be in the cell itself. So calcium 2 plus, and this is the sarcoplasmic reticulum, or it's going to be in here. That's what the dot is representing. But when you block the calcium pumps, this is going to lead to high calcium right inside of the cell. And when high calcium levels are existing in the cell, you are going to see an activation of enzymes that are going to cause cellular damage. Essentially, it's a sort of auto mechanism where the cell activates the enzymes inside of itself and causes auto digestion and damage to the cell. That is what is happening when you block the calcium pumps, causing an increase in calcium in the cytoplasm. And this is all because of low ATP. Okay, that's very important. This is the hallmark cause that we're discussing today. And then finally, when you have low ATP, you can't go through aerobic glycolysis. You are going to activate the anaerobic glycolysis. This is going to build up lactic acid, and essentially this is going to lower the pH, right, because it's going to become more acidic. A lower pH or a more acidic pH is going to then cause cellular damage as well because it can cause the cell wall to denature. It can cause a lot of other issues to happen. It can cause abnormalities with potassium potassium, and so much more. So def definitely aerobic glycolysis is something that's going to lower the pH, okay, because you have a buildup of lactic acid, and thus you are going to damage the cell. Very, very important. I highly recommend you remember this. So when it comes to our cellular damage itself, you got to think about the extent of the damage that's happening. The first type of damage that could really happen is going to be cellular swelling right? This is essentially the initial phase of cellular damage. And all of this is happening because you don't have enough ATP being produced, mainly because of the blockade of the sodium potassium pumps, right? We talked about this earlier. When you block the sodium potassium pumps, you have increase in sodium levels inside the cell. That's going to cause an increase in H2O, that's right, influx, okay? And that's going to cause swelling to happen very very important mechanism and you already probably know that because we just discussed it the key thing to remember about cellular swelling though is that this is going to be reversible the water that comes in can easily go out if you just reverse the mechanism that's happening if you give them atp those sodium potassium pumps are going to be able to function properly and you can remove the water that's very important now you need to understand the characteristics when it comes to cellular damage number one you're going to see a loss of the microvilli well if you think about the microvilli right microvilli are small little things like this like you know small little protrusions if you just swell the cell this is going to look something like more flat right because you just opened up all of that surface area and filled it up and made it expand. So you're going to see a loss of the microvilli. At the same time, you're going to see membrane blebbing. You're going to see the rough endoplasmic reticulum swelling. You're going to see the release of ribosomes from the rough endoplasmic reticulum as well. And these two go hand in hand for me, kind of similar to how the microvilli happen. When you swell the RER, because of the swelling, you're going to cause the ribosomes to just pop off. That's how I remembered it. And then finally, you're going to see a decrease in protein, protein synthesis because so much of the cell is not functioning properly. All of that is the cellular swelling phase okay, of cellular damage. Now, once this exceeds the level uh once the stress that the cell is under exceeds the level that it can you know handle that cellular injury that cellular damage is going to go to a stage that is irreversible and that stage is the membrane damage stage okay this stage is very important because this is going to end up having it happen this is going to end up happening after long standing cellular damage often long standing cellular swelling right the membrane damage essentially is going to occur at a cellular level to the mitochondria to the cell and the lysosomal membranes this is very very important Okay, very, very important. This is irreversible. You're damaging membranes. And once you damage membranes, there's no coming back. So what are you going to see? Number one, you're going to see intracellular enzymes in the blood. And one example of this would be troponin or the ALT, AST ratios that you see when you damage the liver, right? So you're releasing these enzymes that should usually be inside of the cell. But because you have damaged the cell, you're going to see an increase in these levels in the blood. You're also going to see an increase in sorry, intracellular calcium. You're going to see an increase in that. And then finally, you're going to see cytochrome C being released because you are damaging the mitochondria. When you damage the mitochondria, you're going to release 
cytochrome C, and this is going to cause apoptosis to occur. We've discussed this previous vid lecture, so go check that out because we discussed the whole mechanism that it, it takes to cause irreversible damage. And then finally, you also have lysosomal factors in the cytoplasm that get activated and they start to break down the cell itself. All of this is irreversible. So what I would say is make sure you understand this slide. It is very high yield. So I'm going to put a huge high yield right here, HY. Okay, this is probably one of the most high yield sites in this lecture, so I highly recommend you guys remember it. You need to know the differences between the different stages of cellular damage from cellular swelling to the cellular membrane damage stage. And you have to realize what is reversible, what is irreversible, and what are the characteristics of both because you might be given that information and be asked to deduce what stage of cellular damage a cell is in very, very important. I hope this was helpful. If it was, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we're posting brand new videos every single day. And while you're there, don't forget to leave a comment if you guys like this video, if you want us to cover a specific topic. As far as your support, thank you so much for everyone who supported us, who supports us, and who has continued to support us. Your support means a lot to us and we really appreciate it. Thank you and have a wonderful day.